In dogs, players run animal rescue centers or air seats. You'll rescue strays, heal sick or injured dogs, manage your shelters, resources, and more. Hand out air seaboards, starting resources, and the player pieces. You'll also place country dogs on the outer road and city dogs on the inner roads. All of your trucks will start in the middle. Moving to a space costs one gas token. The middle space costs nothing. You can't finish a move in the same space as another truck. When you land on a space, collect the dog. If it has a gold reward symbol, collect the gold shown on the board and then place the dog token on the dog fair space. Otherwise, the token goes in your truck. I'll show the dog fair board in a moment. Once all players have announced that they're going to the ARC, phase one ends. The first and last players may collect the food, medicine, or gas token of their choice. If you didn't move at all, you don't collect the reward token. If you don't have enough gas to return to the ARC, return all the dog tokens that you collected to the bag. Once you return to the ARC, place your dogs. Sick dogs go to the matching space and the healthy ones go into the stalls. You start with two open stalls, meaning eight rows. Four dogs can go to a stall, but only two breeds. Different breeds cannot share a row. There's a bonus for getting four of the same breed in a single stall. During the game, you can open more stalls. Oh, and when you have returned to the ARC, you were allowed to rearrange dogs. This is the only time you can do so, meaning you have to really plan ahead. You'll store your resources in the different rooms. One last thing, the sick dogs can get healed in the next phase. So don't be too sad just yet. There's a ton to do in phase two, so I'm going to try and keep this part short. The first player to put their meeple in a space gets the card of their choice and the benefit of the space. The amount of meeples allowed in each space depends on the player count. You'll be able to do things like build more stalls, heal sick dogs, buy supplies, or even go to the dog fair. Sell or trade prize breeds, or buy one of those reward dogs placed here earlier. In phase three, pay one food stall with at least one dog. Pay a coin for your assistant, or you lose them until you can hire them again. And you can only hire them in phase three. In other words, you'll be one meeple short in phase two until you hire them again. Change all the cards, and then refill the dog spaces on the board. If you run out of dog tokens in the bay, the game ends immediately. If the game hasn't ended, each player collects a coin and may purchase three gas tokens for one gold. You can't have more than nine gas tokens. Pass the first player marker and continue until the end game triggers. The end game triggers a bit differently depending on player counts, and there are also advanced rules. If no players move during phase one, Go through the game as normal, but score after feeding your dogs and paying your assistant. If you ran out of dog tokens, skip to the scoring right away. Collect dogs, keep them fed and healthy, and run a successful business to earn the most points at the end. That's dogs. Dogs is probably best saved for weekends. Even though the rules are simple, the game, including setup and takedown, usually lasts an hour and a half to two hours. We found this to be the same no matter the player count. <sighs> player counts. Okay, I need to go through these without spoiling my likes and dislikes. Dogs supports two through four players and it's playable at all counts. It feels different depending on the number of players though. With the main board, your player boards, the action board, bonus cards and resources, you're going to need a big table to handle this. Not gigantic, but this isn't something you'll be able to play just anywhere. It's not easy to say what ages and experience levels can handle dogs. The basic rules are super easy to learn, but younger kids might struggle if they don't really get the planning and economy parts. The full rules aren't that much harder to understand, but the game gets pretty tough. 
the game becomes less about dogs and more about balancing resources. I'd say eight-year-olds and non-gamers could play the basic game and then go from there. The advanced rules are actually variants, so you can add them one at a time as you all get comfortable with things. In early March, we taught Grandma how to play. She really struggled at first. A lot. We gave her many hints, but she kept getting the wrong resources at the wrong time. Gas when she needed food, and dogs when she didn't have kennel space, things like that. At one point, she had six sick or injured dogs, two she picked up, and four that she couldn't feed. To make things worse, she had no gas, so she couldn't collect any of the reward dogs, and had lost her assistant the round before, making it harder to get a bonus card in phase two. You know what, though? Slowly but surely, she turned things around. She still finished in last, but at least the game was clicking for her. She managed to heal all but one dog, and she even got her assistant back. Great job, Grandma! I love the theme, I love the art, and I love how those two things make sense in terms of gameplay. You want to help these dogs, but if you get a bit too crazy, it'll make things worse for you and the dogs you already have. While the art is great, the components are only decent. The boards are warping a bit, and the tokens, cards, and meeples are your typical quality. Dogs is really tough. This is mostly good. I don't need to keep going on about the resources, but that's not all. You don't really know when the game will end, and some actions can trigger it, so each turn needs to be pretty much perfect. There's also parts in each phase that makes things harder. The roadwork tiles in phase one, the blocking in phase two, and your own frustration in all phases when you realize that things aren't going to work out the way you planned. I just mentioned the phase two blocking. It's a common part of worker placement, and it, along with the way resources work, creates a bit of resource scarcity. And when I say a bit, I mean you may, as I explained during story time, find yourself in a huge mess if you're down even a single dog food or gold or any other resource. And here's what you'll need to decide for yourself if dogs sound super fun or super annoying. Depending on player count, the game swings far in both directions. With two players, dogs aren't collected as quickly and your ARC isn't opening kennels left and right. The resource scarcity is scary, like scarier than the walking dead no sanctuary. You have five action spaces and four meeples. Do the math. If you're both out of gas or have no spaces for dogs, the end game will likely trigger because neither of you go driving around in phase one. With four players, dogs are being scooped up the ARCs are being upgraded, but you now have 10 action spaces and 8 meeples. It's still tough to get what you need, but it's not close to impossible. The end game trigger is harder to predict though. With three, you have a good mix of collected dots, and collecting resources is tough, but not too difficult. But you can't get comfortable because the game can still end at any time. I like dogs, but how much depends on the number of players. With two players, there are many other games I'd rather play. With four, it's quite good. With three, I come pretty close to loving this game. If you are a fan of the theme and you enjoy worker placement and resource management, check this out. Because the resources are the most important part of the game, Players that don't enjoy worker placement or pick up and deliver might still find a lot to like. This could be a solid choice to play with non-gamers too.